Oh, hello, it's me, Jake. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Uh, what is it? It's uh, is it Thursday the thirteenth? It's Thursday the thirteenth. Lucky Thursday the thirteenth. Uh, and I'm here. Welcome aboard. I'm just going to see if I can see myself here on the phone. Man, this new. I'm loving. It's me. I'm hating the Jake. Mebo. Welcome aboard. But I am. Welcome aboard. Uh, but I am loving the new situation. David, greeting, sir. So things are happening. Things are happening in real time. Now, I will say yesterday uh, <clears throat> there was no show because my daughter had a basketball game. Or so we thought. Uh, that game got canceled. So if you're about to ask me how that went uh, for this basketball game, um, it didn't happen. And I took the day off of the show anyway because I had said that I was going to do that so rather than just call an audible. Um... <laughs> oh, it's First Friday for you, Rachel. Well, excellent. Ed, yes, correct. Lucky 13. Scott, hello. And uh, Scott also, uh, hello, I think. Oh, wait, here. Have I said this? I think I have. So, yeah, there was no basketball yesterday. I took the day off the show uh, because that's what I said that I was going to do. And I realized I am glad that I'm doing the show. Because I had recently started to think, oh, is this, it's a lot for me to do. But I really missed it yesterday. So I missed you guys. I'm back today. I've got the Ancient Aliens, the Bible. I've read this. Been to jujitsu this morning. Oh, oh, today's was an exhausting day. Um, show's looking fresh again. Well, I'm feeling fresh, looking fresh, feeling fresh. That's, that's how we, that's how we do it. Um, so you can't even see the thing down here. I can kind of raise this up a little bit and still keep it out of the shot. It looks like, wow, well, can come way up. Oh, there, now that's in the shot. But if I leave it down here, it's out of the shot and, uh, voila, voila, as they say. Um, so, uh, Hey, Rich. Good to see you. You're on the stand-up paddleboard today, Dave. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, what have I got? I've got the Ancient Aliens of the Bible. I've got a renewed vigor and enthusiasm for doing the show. Uh, I don't know if that's going to result in better shows, but uh, at least I'm going to be feeling better about myself. <clears throat> I know it's not Motivational Monday, but I was a little bit feeling like... Uh, anyway... I'm really, I'm really trying to think about getting back out on the road. I'm still frustrated about doing, getting to do sets here in town, but, you know, um, things will happen when they happen, and meanwhile, until then, we'll just have to be patient, I think, right? Uh, where is today? Okay, here we are. Um, Hello, Amy. Greetings to you in Detroit. Yes, Brad, first Friday greetings. It feels... It, these weeks are zipping by quick. I guess that day off on hump day was was a was a tricky one for me, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's Thursday before you know it, or first Friday before you know it. I don't even know what I've got planned for this weekend. Bike ride as usual. Um, <coughs> I've got my Friday jujitsu class, which is really basically kind of a wrestling lesson by the great Rico Schiaparelli. Google him. And uh, I'm excited about that. But meanwhile, today in Ancient Aliens in the Bible, um, my, uh, let's see if I can get it to focus right down on the, can you get it to go right to the Bible? Oh, isn't that nice? That's a good shot, wouldn't you say? Um, all right, so let's see, where, where are we? Where were we? Where were we? When last we checked in on Ancient Aliens of the Bible, we were talking about uh, Israelites coming into the promised land of Canaan and uh, problems. The Canaanites looked pretty tough. Uh, King Og of Bashan was the last survivor of the giant Raphaites. His bed was made of iron and was more than 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. 6 feet wide for one person? I, are they sure? <laughs> now come on. Giant King Og. Maybe his bed was six feet long and 13 feet wide, and he had two ladies in it, as was the fashion in those days for kings. Anyway, it can still be seen at the Ammonite city 
of Rabah. So next time you're in Rabah, don't forget to visit King Og of Bashan's bed, uh, 13 feet wide, 6 feet long, or the other way around, which is slightly less impressive. Um, so the Bible talks about many clashes between Israelites and the Philistines for the right to rule the Canaan lands. Uh, the Philistines, as we know, uh, you, all, what you, when you're going up against the Philistines, you need a, a, a slingshot and a jawbone of an ass if you if you really want to do some serious business. Um, oh yeah, David, you're saying should be easier to get on the road with CDC saying you don't have to wear a mask if you're fully vaccinated. Yeah, I can't wait to see the arguments on social media that come up about how you don't have your mask on. I'm vaccinated. Show me your card. I don't have to show you my card. I, I, I. Oh, Jesus. Let's get back to the Philistines and let's not forget <laughs> if, you, if you can find a good source of ass jawbones on the internet, uh, please order me one because uh, I'm going to be dealing with some asses and I doubt that I'll be able to borrow their jawbones. So if I have my own jawbone of an ass to deal with the asses that I'm going to be dealing with. Um, Jay! Uh, birthday tomorrow in Omaha. Well, shameless plug. <laughs> Don't never be ashamed of your birthday, Jay. Uh, your picture looks like you're a, a, ch a very small child, <laughs> which I doubt. That must be your very small child. Happy birthday in advance or en avance, as we say in France, if we're going to France, which we're not during this pandemic, or at least I'm not. I guess I'd love to be in France. Uh, first, the Philistines. So, um, <clears throat> the famous uh, the famous battle between the Israelite and the Philistine uh, Goliath. Uh, that's uh, what, what's his name? Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, the Philistine named Goliath of Geth, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, how tall of that? How tall is that an American? Um, was Goliath a real giant? He was at least nine feet tall. We take the ancient me measurements, so that is uh, that is a big that's a that's a tall man. Oh, and there is a picture here of the bed of Og the giant, and you can tell that it, it is wide and long in the way that they say, because as you can see, it's like a cha chaise longue, as uh, as sometimes you'd describe it. Oh, there you go. You can see the bed of King Og. <laughs> It's like reading to children here at uh, Ancient Aliens in the Bible Day. Uh, you got to hold the book up so that all everyone in the class can see. So, um, findings of skeletons, footprints, and tools of gigantic individuals more than nine feet tall have been found in various parts of the world. So says Xavier Hayes, if we're to believe him. And why wouldn't we believe him? We're on page sixty-seven of his book. That's two pages away from page sixty-nine. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, just speaking of reading children reading to children. In Morocco they found axe blades only suitable for individuals that were at least 13 feet tall! And uh, Zavian uses uh, oh, I thought it was three explanation part, uh, marks, but it's just one. 13 feet tall. That is a tall that's a tall woodsman uh, if you think about it that way. Um, <laughs> uh, then, then they start talking about how uh, all these great stones, like how how do you know, how do you know that these giants didn't build all the pyramids and everything? That, that's one explanation. That's how they lugged all those rocks up that hill. Yeah, Xavier's a little bit nutty. Anyway, um, anyway, so there's more talk about giants. These giants were the indirect consequence of the Anunnaki's tinkering with the genetic codes of early humans. Well, as we know, the Anunnaki tinkered with the early genetic codes of humans and to create some atoms, and then they made some eaves out of the atoms so that the atoms could reproduce themselves and the Anunnaki would not have to make more atoms all the time. And then the eaves were pretty hot, so then the Anunnaki started having sex with them. What do you get when you cross an Anunnaki with a genetically engineered eave? You get giants, and that's how you, that's how you wind up with King Og. And again, this is a bedstead of Og the Great, Og the Giant, but uh, it is just a picture, and there's some tiny men looking at it. Anyway, so that's uh, that's your uh, <laughs> that's your that's your ancient aliens in the Bible for today. Next week, chapter four. We're, it's oh, it's my how time flies. It's uh, May thirteenth, and we're almost on chapter four. Angels at the gates of Gomorrah, 
chapter 4, angels. We're going to be talking about angels. And as we all know, when the Bible says angels, the ancient aliens in the Bible correctly informs us that those angels were actually the aliens, the Anunnaki, here on Earth. And so we're going to hear more about that. Uh, Zavian's got a couple of things that he likes to talk about. He likes to talk about the giants, he likes to talk about the Anunnaki, and then he keeps circling back to those. So if uh, Thursdays are starting to feel repetitious, this is why. Uh, well, this and the fact that uh, we've all been locked indoors for all this time. But, as you say, very exciting. <laughs> What's Jake's P.O. Box? <laughs> uh, 5029. Um, but uh, someone will be able to get that to you, or I can send it to you. Keys, if you're planning, I don't know what you're sending me. <laughs> I hope it's not cow, cow poo. Uh, they, the uh, T is the TSA has, has asked people who are coming to the United States not to, not to try and bring in uh, cow poo in their, in their suitcases. And at first I thought, oh, this is this is people who are, um, having one taking the piss on the TSA agents by putting cow poo in their suitcases, then they have to search it. But it's not. People are putting the cow poo in there because they think it protects them from COVID. <laughs> thank God. Uh, thank God we. We don't have the president touting that. If you think, if you think, if you think uh, things are weird, so David, yes, the, the CDC is saying that you don't have to wear a mask if you're fully vaccinated. So I'm fully vaccinated. I don't have to wear the mask. Bob, you're checking in from work. Hopefully, there's no golf carts in the po pond today. Um, <clears throat> chastity, I see that you're watching here. Maybe you're not even watching anymore. But greetings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Rachel Keith. Uh, Keys probably does want to send me the Rachel jawbone. Oh, Keys, you and Rachel got this squared away. That's good. Uh, you like that the director is occasionally cutting to camera X shots, keeping it fresh, so fresh. Yeah. Yes, Ed, we're really keeping it fresh here in uh, showbiz headquarters, pandemic showbiz headquarters, or as I used to call this place, the poditorium. Uh, Flavia, greetings. I'm glad to see that you were able to make it. Um... Ratings for the show are a bit down, as I've looked on the book of faces. Uh, that could be, that could be my doing. Maybe if I was offering a more compelling fare, I'd, uh, people would be more compelled to, to show up. But we're doing what we do. We're doing what we do. Increasingly, it looks like you might drive back to Indiana in the middle of June. Maybe even get all your kids to meet up there too. Six thousand miles of driving. Oh, here you go, Ed. Good golly, Miss Molly. Well. You know, Lady Jerry and I, that's what we're talking about when we get that camper on the truck. Um, progress is moving forward. I've been in touch with the camper people, as I told you, up there at Kimbo in Bellingham, Washington. I'm going to go to the bank to make sure I've got my, uh, I've got my um, bank certified check, blah, blah, ready to go. Flavia, thank you. <laughs> Shows are great. Always a pleasure. Um, yeah, this this may be this may be show business. I just got the thermometer back from my daughter. She had this after her vaccine, and so she was taking her temperature ninety seven point five. That's where I like that's where I like to stay. Went in for a secondary six weeks after my last teeth cleaning. I went in for another teeth cleaning today, and the fun meter is in the maximum, as you might might expect after uh, two teeth cleanings in six weeks. Uh, Keys, you're saying as more people get vaccinated, we'll find more things to do at 3 p.m. Yeah, no, I get it. Well, I might have to change the show show time to a different uh, to a different uh, time. Uh, it could be first thing in the morning is tricky because <laughs> I'd be out here before jujitsu. I'm not going to do that at 5:30. Um, Flavia, you enjoy teeth cleanings. Well, that takes a little bit of the uh, that takes a little bit out of the satisfaction I got out of how much you're enjoying the show. <laughs> But uh, I'm glad. I enjoy the feeling after I've had my teeth cleaned, but not the actual cleaning time. Um, Todd, you're getting some major concern concerts and all coming to Boise. Wow, Jim Gaffigan among others. Come on. Yeah, well, Todd, I'd love to get up there to Boise. I hear good things about it. I hear you need some more immigrants up there. That's what I heard on NPR the other day. Haven't got enough people to run your uh, elder care facilities. That's what I hear on NPR when I'm up at 6 in the morning, getting ready to go to <laughs> try and keep some younger men from choking me. Um, people don't get their teeth cleaned every six weeks, Ed. I went... Usually I'm on a 
three, four months in between time. So I'm getting them cleaned three, four times a year. But I went uh, nine months or so during the pandemic and I went in and the dentist came in to inspect me after the hygienist was finished and the hygienist can do everything that she's got to do, but she's got another appointment in an hour. They want you piling up in the waiting room. So she wrapped it up with me, but the dentist said, look, come back again. I'm going to go deep on your teeth so we get you where we want you moving forward. So that's what happened. But uh, at least that's what he told me. I think some of the, some of what goes on at the dentist is uh, what, what can we get you, what's the most we can get you to put up with in order to generate revenue? But I do like my dentist, so I hate to accuse him of that. But then again, I think that's what's going on. Do most bad experiences turn out for the best? That's what today's question box answer. Uh, objection, uh, question box. You're leading the witness. Do most bad experiences turn out for the best? Um, well, isn't it pretty to think so? I think that's what we have to believe, uh, that most bad experiences turn out for the best, because all experiences bring us to the person we are today, and I think we can all agree that that person, who we are today, is awesome. It's not even Monday, but that's a, that's a little free, that's a free one for everybody. Um, so all experiences bring you to the person you are today, and that person is awesome and better than the person you were before. So in that sense, of course, all bad, most, not just most bad experiences, all bad experiences turn out for the best. I mean, obviously, we're trying to learn from our mistakes as, so as not to repeat them. <laughs> but sometimes you have to take the course a second time in order to learn the lesson that you're supposed to less, lesson, lesson eight, lesson eight. Um, I, I think I think a lot of times people break up with someone because uh, because they think that that person they're breaking up with is the problem, and then they wind up in a new relationship with a new person, and they end up at the same problem impasse, and sometimes way faster, and uh, <laughs> and oftentimes still people think, oh, this I keep picking these other people, and it's like no you are trying to teach yourself a lesson the hard way. We all love the hard way. And so you keep making the same mistake again and again. What could you do differently to not wind up with a person who's going to get you in this situation? Um, meanwhile, but most bad experiences do turn out for the best. Most, most bad experiences don't kill us. And so you get to have an experience another day. That's better. Um, <laughs> Todd, you have nothing to do with the immigrant s situation there. Um, well, of course you don't. And who who does? I, I have very little to do with anything that goes on here. Lady Jerry's in charge of most things. In fact, I can't even get her to do the show most of the time now. Um, wow, I'm really on board with Sarah Silverman's belief that death seeps in through the gums. Well, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure that that's Sarah Silverman's belief either. Um, but I mean, it is her belief, but I'm not sure. I don't think she wrote that. Uh, I think that she got that. Uh, there's definitely evidence that your gum tooth dental health is tied to your cardi cardiac health. And uh, and so I'm, I'm really, I bought the electric toothbrush after my visit to the dentist six weeks ago. And I've been using that, uh, well, I was going to say religiously, but uh, that would mean that I'm not using it at all. Uh, so I have been using it every day, the electric toothbrush, and I've been a little lax on the flossing the last six weeks, mostly because I was pissed off that I had to come back six weeks later. But now I'm going to, I'm rededicating myself to some faxing. I'm not going to make fa faxing, flossing. I'm rededicating myself to some flossing. I'm not going to make that flossing mistake again. Um, so most bad things turn out for the, for the best, except for, uh, Negligence, negligence of flossing and that you get a bad time. Bad experiences build character and are another growth experience. Brad, excellent. Yes, you're right. Um, hard times make hard men and hard men make soft times. And then soft times make soft men and then you rinse repeat. <laughs> Try it again. Seriously, gum bacteria is tied to dementia. Oh, you'll find the report, Ed. Uh, <laughs> did you forget where it is? Ah, mm, ah. <sighs> How are we doing on time? Oh, we're still running ahead of schedule. <laughs> question from the question box. Um, 
Oh, the book of questions. I'm so scared to look at the bush, book of questions, but I'm going to just, I'm going to try, I'm going to try one from the book of questions. Uh, <laughs> I love the book of questions right now. Would you rather be happy yet slow-witted and unimaginative or unhappy yet bright and creative? For example, I like that there's an example. Wait, I don't get the question. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, would you rather be happy yet slow-witted and unimaginative or unhappy yet bright and creative? For example, would you rather live the life of a brilliant yet tortured artist such as Vincent van Gogh or that of a happy but carefree soul who is a bit simple-minded? Um, like, uh, who's the Kincaid, the artist, Thomas Kincaid? We had that debate, although he was also tortured. So you can't win either way. In 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 real life... You're either Vincent Van Gogh or this Thomas Kincaid, painter of light, who winds up addicted to drugs and uh, makes a mess of his life anyway. Uh, so I would argue that Vincent Van Gogh was brilliant and tortured, but uh, he was, and, and, and his art was amazing, but his unhappiness didn't have anything to do with his art. In, in, in actually both of those cases, your happiness and your art are actually two separate things. And it is a common mistake to think that they're somehow uh, connected, that, that uh, you have to be, suffer in order to be a great artist. Well, you have to experience life in order to make art. That's true. But uh, you don't have to be a tortured, uh, miserable person. And if you are a tortured, miserable person, commonly you think that you're going to be happy if you then go on and have some success. And... That is not the case, as we learned when we were talking about Thomas Kincaid the other day. That guy made some bank with his art. Now, whatever you think of his art, that's another thing. I think they're fun to look at, Thomas Kincaid's paintings. But uh, he's, no, he's no Vincent Van Gogh. I wouldn't cut my ear off for any of that. Um, okay, paging up here. Ooh, somebody's been... Uh, Rachel, there's a... Fun fact for Rachel, you have no cavities. There's something for the resume. Yeah, that's that's awesome for the resume, Rachel. No cavities. Congratulations. How are your gums? That's the real question. That's the topic of the day. Tomorrow we're going to look Lookenbach, Texas. Gonna get <laughs> gonna gonna guess Waylon and Willie and the boys won't be around anywhere. Well, Willie might, but I don't think you're gonna run into Waylon there. Um Flavia, you guess, to be honest, you'd rather be happy. I would, too. And, and I think we've talked about this before. Happiness is a choice. So you can be, you can be happy. And, uh, but, yeah, happy and simple-minded, I think. Of course, you have to not be simple-minded in, in order to make that choice, in which case it gets tricky because you're giving something up to be happy when, in fact, you don't have to do that. Uh, going into your 60s, Ed, you only had two, but now you have a crown. Two cavities, but now you have a crown. Ooh. Rachel, your gums are pretty good. It's not that you're a great flosser. You think it's mostly genetics. Well, um, <laughs> you got to take these wins anywhere you can get them. Um, Flavia, you had have not had a cavity in 30 years, amazingly, but you had plenty of teeth that needed crowns due to the old fillings that damaged the structure of your teeth. Hmm. So you haven't had cavity. Yeah, I haven't had any cavities since I was a kid. I had four cavities when I was a kid, and uh, they've all held up since I had them filled with the fillings, which is, I, I guess, maybe you, do your teeth grow? Maybe, I guess they don't. It's hard to believe that I've had this same size teeth since I, since I was a teenager. It seems like your teeth would get bigger, but maybe your teeth get bigger. But the, uh, but your uh, 204 head cam, yeah, Todd, the camera, the camera is doing its own magic. I can't, I can't really uh, testify to how, how that all happens, but I moved it back so that you know, ho hopefully it does a good job, and we all enjoy ourselves, and it adds a little action element to the show. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, Ed seems to like it. So fresh. Uh, so, uh, what time is it? I think it's time for Seize the Day. I hope Jen's okay. I haven't seen Jen in a while. Uh, it's time for Seize the Day. We've got uh, our um, the happy half hour tom tomorrow. Friday happy half hour. Oh, seize the day working? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it is. Seize, seize the day. 
Oh, it's out of the camera. Seize the day. All right. Jake, did I have braces on my teeth as a kid? What about Fanula? Yes, I had braces as a kid, Rachel, and so did Fanula. My teeth, these top ones, turned out okay. The bottom one, one of them's kind of got pushed. There's one, one of the bottom ones didn't work out so great. But Fanula had braces. And Fanula, I would have to say, Lady Jerry and I, our daughter, uh, she is an avid flosser and brusher and taker carer of her skin. She's really, um, she's really maintaining what, uh, what the Anunnaki gave her. Uh, your bones are probably strong too, you're saying uh, to Rachel. Yeah, well, I bet they are. I think my bones are pretty good, Ed, fresh. Yeah, it is STD time, Brad. It's STD, seize the day. Let's get on with it. Today sees the day, and don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow. Now, tomorrow, Fanula, <laughs> I'm told, has a basketball game. We should have time for the show uh, as planned, but I'm going to have to get out of here on time at uh, 3.30, or 3.30, as they say. Um, so today sees the day. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a good one. This is by an unknown. Unknown. Heard of him? Her? I don't know what unknown's chosen pronouns are. But uh, today's Seize the Day is by unknown. Cupcakes are muffins that believed in miracles. I don't, I don't know what to even say about that. Cupcakes are muffins that believed in miracles. Where, whereas I think muffins are cupcakes in disguise and uh, there you go but I'm known what do I know I will see you all tomorrow well I won't see you I will see you I see you on the thing I see you type I, th I see the things that you type and if you're not the things that you type then who are you you've got to stand by the things that you type or sometimes just behind them uh, don't give up there'll be plenty of time to give up later uh, it's my pleasure to be here, as I now realize after a day off yesterday, feeling good, feeling fresh, Ed, feeling tan, rested and ready. I went in the ocean today. That got my mind right. I take it a few days off because it, the ocean has warmed up. It's still cool, but it's warmed up a bit, but uh, made me feel better. <coughs> so I'm getting back in the habit of jumping in the ocean every day again, even though it's, it's not as big of a cold challenge. See you all for um, the Friday happy half hour tomorrow. Take care.